Ever found yourself saying LA Knight's catchphrase when he comes on TV? Let me talk to you. Yeah. You're not alone. LA Knight's rise in 2023 has been meteoric. Listen to that reaction when he comes out on TV. Even when he's not on the main event, he's getting the biggest response from the fans right now. But for some who followed him for the better part of the last decade, it isn't too much of a surprise. Although others want to claim because he's 40 years old, this can't be his big break. He's 40. It's been a long time coming. And also, you have to consider that a lot of pro wrestling great main eventers got their break, their biggest period of success between 35 and 45 years old. Logan Paul, representing that Gen Z take of going after someone for simply aging, asked LA Knight in London before Money in the Bank, Megastar, who? And pointed out that he saw he was a man who was supposed to be a manager after 20 years of a lackluster career. Lackluster, a little bit too harsh of a word there, Logan Paul. Uh, why don't you slow down there, pal? Because it wasn't wrong in saying that he was supposed to be a manager. He managed to overcome that manager gimmick, which was simply just mediocre, and become WWE's hottest star. Let's see how it happened. Apart from his current WWE run, his most well-known period of his pro wrestling career was his four-year stint with Impact Wrestling. That put him on the map, even during his early years, he had all the makings of a mega star. He was confident he held the microphone with authority and carried charisma that came off the screen. He was so over that Impact even gave him his own talk show called Fact of Life, where we would often hear that catchphrase we hear now. Yeah, delete! Yeah, obsolete! Yeah, delete! Yeah, yeah that's right, something from Impact being big in WWE. After he finished making a name for himself in Impact in 2019, there was talks of him going to the newly formed All Elite Wrestling, but he ultimately declined and waited it out and competed in the NWA before putting pen to paper with WWE in 2021. This was his second run with WWE NXT. He previously had a less successful period with the black and yellow brand between 2013 and 2014, where he simply got lost in the shuffle of a very stiff, strong NXT roster that was truly at its peak at the time. This time, though, he was ready. It wasn't surprising when LA Knight jumped to the main roster of WWE within a year of his NXT return. But apparently there's this problem that if you're a person who ages like all of us, that's becoming a problem. He was 39, which isn't bad in modern pro wrestling. As I mentioned, many big stars blow up in this period of their life. But it seems as though certain higher ups in WWE didn't want to bet their future on a guy of that age. So he was assigned to Mace and Mansoor and formed Maximum Male Models, becoming a sleazy agent named Max Dupree. It helped Mace and Mansoor get a bit over, and he was recruited also to bring in his sister Maxine Dupree. The only problem was there was no actual plan in place for them. And a couple of months after Triple H took over the creative reins of WWE, he quickly reverted back to his LA Knight persona, which feels like a little bit of a throwback to the heyday of 80s pro wrestling. Speaking to comicbook.com, LA Knight had this to say about the Max Dupree persona. I'll just say this, at the end of the day, I can make anything work, but at the end of the day, I've got a real tough time not being me. I'll tell you this, it wasn't me. So when things came to pass and LA Knight started to shine through, it was the right place to go and not a moment too soon. He revealed that WWE's concerns with his age are what led to him becoming a manager, despite the fact that he had no surgeries, no major ailments that could inhibit him as an in-ring performer. It's also a bit odd that this was their concern, given that you have superstars in their late 40s winning world championships and getting pushed. 40 seems to be the new 30 in WWE, and they seem to have taken a weird exception to that with L.A. Knight. 
But it was about to get worse. He told Chris Van Vliet on his Insights podcast that he was sure he was close to getting let go. Without specifying what it was, he stated that a bunch of things happened that made him feel that way. Thankfully, he got the call, telling him that he was being kept around. Given that he was red hot upon his own admission towards the end of his NXT run, it's not hard to see why he felt like Max Dupree was just a step back for him. And on Rosenberg Radio, he said the following. I mean, let's be honest, when you get pulled up to the main roster, there's a nice little pay bump. Can't say I don't appreciate that. At the same time, there's a lot of frustration knowing like, man, I was red hot at the end of that NXT run. While Knight was determined to make it work again, Triple H intervening certainly helped him because the game informed him of the decision to become LA Knight once again. You can only imagine what a sigh of relief it was for him when he went from being maximum male models manager, that's still weird to say, to actually being himself again. Can we get a yeah? Yeah! And this isn't a knock on the Maximum Male Models thing. They were entertaining and made the most out of what they had. There's something to be done with it, but it doesn't strike you as main event. It was certainly a detriment to LA Knight more than anyone else in the faction, with Maxine Dupree, in retrospect, probably being a better fit for them anyway. But the real turning point for Knight came in the form of a feud against... Bray Wyatt. In late 2022, he began a rivalry against the returning Bray Wyatt. Wyatt was just a couple months into this return with fans feverishly eating up every piece of cryptic online puzzle pieces in the lead up to his eventual return. So what would his first big match be with the new character, the new presence of Uncle Howdy being spooky in and out of the ring? It seemed exciting, but given that the two men don't necessarily have a reputation for being the ultimate five-star in-ring wrestlers, there was little excitement for that. That doesn't mean they couldn't make it work and add to the fact that their match at Royal Rumble became a literal advertisement for Mountain Dew Pitch Black, things weren't looking good for both of them. And it always set up Bray Wyatt to get his win, especially given that this was his first match back in years. But let's be real, Bray Wyatt was the biggest opponent that LA Knight could have faced in his career at that point. And despite the match playing out the way it did and kind of leaving fans with less than they expected, it allowed the larger WWE audience to get a good look at LA Knight and what he could be. After that Royal Rumble match, many fans decided that LA Knight was the guy to get the push, and not Wyatt, and that probably wasn't what people were thinking going into the match. There was a real feel for this because during the entirety of the Fiend run between 2019 and 2021, most superstars that feuded with Wyatt ended up coming out worse than they did coming in. Miz, Rollins, Randy Orton, Braun Strowman, they're still big stars, but you know, lost a little bit of their edge. Although he was unfairly omitted from the WrestleMania card in Los Angeles and he's LA Knight, come on, it writes itself, he persisted and got over all on his own. It's a lot more than just catchphrases that got him to connect with the greater wrestling audience. Although WWE has often been accused of insulting the intelligence of the fans, that's not what they're doing. And if you think that, just surface level, you're not looking at the big picture, baby. What fans can sense is an instant authenticity. In an era where we have great in-ring performers, but fewer characters that connect all the way to the top row of arena, it's easy to see why people would gravitate towards someone like L.A. Knight. For vocal hardcore fan bases, he's a man who made it all by himself without the machine behind him, so we have to fight the machine, rage against the machine. For the other more casual fan, he's a great talker and reminds him of big over-the-top characters they liked, like The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, while adding his own unique twist to it. It's no coincidence that his reactions got better week by week. And if you want to know one simple reason why he became WWE's hottest star, it's all because he did it all by himself. We see this every few years. It's part of the natural cycle of WWE and their audience, with a superstar unexpectedly emerging above where they actually stand on the crowd and getting reactions that no one saw coming or at least they should have seen coming. For LA Knight, escaping the Max Dupree character was directly related to him getting saved from a possible release. 
The timing certainly worked out, but that was just about all the luck he had. As we've seen, LA Knight has been positioned in some big matches recently, but didn't come up with the W like Money in the Bank, and even more recently, he failed to get into United States title contention. WWE isn't always good at striking while the iron is hot, but as Triple H has said, patience is something you should apply to LA Knight. But before we end, Here's a quote from the man himself in an interview with Digital Spy, knowing that his journey is far from done. I look back on the journey very fondly in a lot of ways. At the same time, I look back at it with a lot of frustration and a lot of anger because I should have been here a long time ago. I should have been doing this and having this match and all this stuff a long time ago. Although at the same time I appreciate what I've done and the way I've had to go about it and the fact I've gotten to live the life that I've gotten to live, particularly over the last 10 years. Thanks for watching Sports Keto Wrestling. What do you want to see happen for LA Knight? Let us know in the comments below and check out more great videos from our channel right now.